Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and can we just appreciate this uh, 3D rendered intro that uh, the, the person today sent us in for the solo queue school? Anyway, we're doing a console VOD, as a lot of people have been asking for them, and we're back. I know it's been a little bit sketchy this week. I think we've only had two, three videos this week. Uh, I've, I've been really busy behind the scenes, but I think that we're all in the clear now. We'll have videos uh, coming out on the normal schedule Hopefully. Also, the stream will be starting back up today, so hop on over. It should be up. I should be streaming when this video is uploaded. Anyway, we're doing Symmetra, like I said before, and we're on console, huh? So he put his turrets in the annoying positions, you know, one here, one here, one here, behind the corner, whatever, and that's fine. That's an okay style. Notice he didn't put any forward turrets up early on to harass with, which you, you pretty much don't lose anything from doing that. If we, if we actually go back to that last turret that he placed down, you can see that, uh, well, actually when the clock starts, I guess, he still has three going on, four turrets remaining in his inventory, which is just kind of a waste of resources. He had time to put those four turrets up near their spawn. So as Symmetra, I don't think that there's any real reason to not, because if they die, then nothing happens, you don't lose anything, and if they live, you can get some nice ultimate charge. So we push on the Roadhog here. We already saw he used the hook. Good, good, good. No problem. Everything's fine. Now, we do hear a Pharah in the back right now, and that's why our hero is kind of looking around for it. Preferably, probably would have wanted to stay at the front because there's not too much you can do against the Pharah, especially you don't have your teleporter up yet, so there's really nothing you can do about the Pharah, or nothing you care about the Pharah anyway. That's your team's job. So we just lost a lot of pressure at the front because of the kind of wandering around. Also, ooh, danger zone, just stepped into Roadhog Hook territory. But overall, all right, not too bad. Once again, that was Roadhog Hook territory, but we threw out the shield. I don't know if it was correctly timed shield, but we had the idea down. So now we have a teleporter, and our hero asks. Shield gen or teleporter? Well, we want a teleporter. <laughs> Why? Well, first of all, we already have a dead teammate, and a dead teammate means he needs to get back fast. We need a teleporter. Plus, on the first point, you always have a very, very long spawn. It's control point, so you can stall out. It's just, a teleporter is so, so good. The only time you wouldn't want to pick a teleporter is if you're low on healing, if you have a team that is very all-in, like, all right, once they're broken, they can't trickle in very well. Like a team that has a Bastion, for example, or a Torbjorn on it, or even an Orisa, they can't really push forward. So once they're dead, it doesn't matter if they use a teleporter, chances are they're still dead. So shield generator is usually good in those weird pocket strats, but overall, okay. We picked teleporter, good option, but notice where we placed it. Let's actually go look at that again. Let's hop into the map real quick. So this was the area right here where the shield generator was. And so, is this good? That's a good question. It's a little bit strange. This is strong against Farah because where does Farah usually come from? Farah can usually come over this building, right? And, well, she doesn't have an angle there. That's quite good. Yep, you can see that even through this little crack, she can't see it. It's too far to the right. And, of course, she'll fly around this way. Okay, she can also fly around this right-hand side, which will usually land her over here. That's why... Putting a shield generator in this building can be a little bit dangerous against Farah. You have to babysit it. But here, once again, she won't be able to see the shield generator. Even if she drops down, she won't be able to see it. So this is a pretty good anti farah shield generator. But as we can see, this is their team composition. So this was a, this was a Roadhog, but still doesn't matter. They had a Farah, That's good. So you're countering the Farah with that shield generator placement. But they have a Genji which makes it very risky. It's not quite as risky as a Tracer, for example, who really, really likes this path, but Genjis quite often do tend to prefer this. They'll go, okay, up the hill, up the wall rather, over here, down the stairs, but da da Let's do a little bit of, of a flank around, and oh look, free shield generator. So that had a pretty high probability of happening considering that they had a Genji, but that's still actually not that terrible because you can shut this down by yourself. You can just put turrets along here. You can body block in this area. You can spam your orbs from this angle. Babysit the stairwell. Make sure no nasty flankers like the Genji or the Hanzo, potentially it could happen, comes in this area. 
and your teleporter would be mostly safe. But instead, after we place our teleporter, we go immediately to the left side. Well, we place a couple turrets, all right. But then we go to the left side, and that's basically exposing our turret completely. We don't know where the Genji is at this particular time. In fact, we even push <laughs> around the corner. But now we're going to see an interesting problem that this player actually has. And so, okay, we're on the retake. Cool. Now, we place turrets. Battle raging all around us, we place turrets. And it sounds kind of funny, right? All right, there's people in front of us, uh, now let's place turrets down. But this player actually does this every single fight. And, well, he gets, pun he gets punished by the Hanzo. That's a little bit of a you know map awareness issue. But the real issue as we go back in time is, as Symmetra, you have to be very decisive. You have to say, okay, what are we doing here? You can't do multiple things. Symmetra is a very linear sort of, one, you do one thing, and that's what you do. And in this case, you can choose between, I mean, you can hang back. You could be like back here, and you could just sort of be strafing this wall, maybe put some turrets here, be very, very passive like that. Perhaps perhaps you could go behind this cover of the of the car and put some turrets like here, you know, around here. Perhaps you could do that. That is an option. But we're going to see that our hero sort of does halvesy halvesy. He jumps onto the cart. Yeah, okay, nah, put down, put it down finally, but we're already on top of the cart, so we don't even have cover. So we're both playing aggressively and passively at the same time, which results in doing nothing and also getting killed. So now we go for the respawn. We're going to see the same thing again. So we jump in, turrets blazing. There we go. And, all right, the fair eventually goes down. Cool. But... So we went out of our way to place these turrets, right? We placed this earlier, we placed another one there, and yet our hero chooses not to play the turrets. Choose to push up and go aggro. Now this is not like a desperation situation. There's actually no percentage taken on this point at all. So actually if we had these turrets down already, just play the turrets. You can hide behind here, maybe put some more turrets down. Maybe the Genji will push you, he'll die, maybe. But he can't, like, if he's smart, he won't, right? So you're safe here. You can wait for your teammates. And in fact, we see later on that our Tracer actually gets a Pulse Bomb kill on the Reinhardt. So there's no Reinhardt. There's nothing blocking you anymore. The rest of our team's coming in. We would have had a much better chance of retaking if we had been passive there with the turrets or earlier aggressive when our team was being aggressive. So we need to decide, which one do we want to be? Do we want to be with the turrets? Do we want to wait for the team? Or do we want to go and be aggressive? Once again, we're seeing, uh, we're, you know, putting turrets down while we're getting hit by Reinhardt and charging them. So we need to decide, all right? Our hero, his name is Fade, by the way. Our hero, Fade, if, if you want to place turrets down, place turrets down and be passive and kind of plan out what you're going to do. If you want to be aggressive with your team, then go in and just left click. So once again, a little bit indecisive on the teleporter. I, I do suggest, because this player plays a lot of Symmetra, to actually go through and plan out specifically where you want to put these things in the map, because that is a little bit of a suboptimal, kind of dangerous spot. By the way, there you committed. You didn't put a turret down. I'm proud. You got the kill. That's, let's watch that one time, one more time, because this is what I was talking about before. Notice, our team is here. Our team is also just one step behind us. We come around the corner. We see our target. He whiffs the scatter shot because it's kind of an awkward angle on this incline. And then we hold L M B. Actually, he's on he's on console. Never mind. So he holds what? Right trigger. Yeah. Bam. Got it done. No turrets required. So now we're at the last fight, the final fight for this particular checkpoint. And once again, we're going to see the same thing. Now, early on, this is an okay-ish fight. This is not actually the worst fight that we've seen so far. But, okay, take out the Genji, that's cool. Put turrets down. This is not bad, we have time. Why not? All right, put the turrets down. But now, we don't actually, we're gonna wind up not playing the turrets at all. First of all, we spread them out a little bit, which, eh, you can spread them out, but, okay, so. We have our three turrets here. We even have an additional one covering the other side of this car, the cart. Now. If you were to play these, notice, nobody here. 
There's an Arisa, but the Arisa gets knocked this way. All right. So if you're to play these turrets, this is actually not where you play them. Because if someone wants to attack you, they actually get to push away from the turrets. So you're specifically leading them away from the turrets. If you're to play over here, behind the cart, or, you know, in this area, I'll draw it. There we go, over here. If we were, if we were to swoop around that way. Then not only would we be forcing them into the turrets to fight us, because they'd have to go this way into through the turrets, but we'd also be in a slightly safer position in general. So as I said before, uh, Reinhardt can push in. He's pushing away from the turrets now. We're not, we're not utilizing them at all. He's going to kill us. Remember, the turrets slow as well. All right, so that round went on a little bit longer, but we'll, we'll skip to the offense now because we saw everything I think that we want to see on defense. But anyway, we're going to look at two fights and then call it a day here. Two fights. All right, so what have we done? First of all, we used our shield. We popped an orb. Okay. What are the implications of this? First of all, our team is dead. Double dead. Doubly super dead. Now, as Symmetra, when you're attacking, and I know people in the comments are going to be like, you just don't attack with Symmetra, but on, atta on attack with Symmetra, you need to be very decisive. You need to either be hiding, be passive, or be going all the way in and going you know, through with a plan. And we're going to see that our hero does not, in fact, have a plan. And so, our team is dead. We're shooting orbs. If we're shooting orbs, that means that we're kind of being a little bit more passive, right? We're, we're just spamming orbs. If they're full, full speed orbs, we're also, we're making another orb. There we go. But we're not in a passive position. We're in a very aggressive position. And so, again, this player has an issue with this duality of do I be passive or do I be aggressive? Remember, Symmetra, you can only choose one. And this time he chose both. And as a result, he has 11 health. He fed a bunch of ultimate for the, to the enemy Reaper, and he hasn't really accomplished anything. But overall, I think that the summary of this is on Symmetra, you really, really need to pay attention to, am I being passive? And on defense, that's kind of your choice. Am I being passive or am I being aggressive? And on attack, you need to pay attention to your team. If they're being aggressive, you need to be aggressive. If they're being passive or dead, you need to be passive. There can be no back and forth here. You need to be very, very decisive with Symmetra. A passive-aggressive Symmetra, I mean, no one likes a passive-aggressive person in real life, right? They're not going to like them uh, in a video game either. And so the only time, actually, on attack, meanwhile, this footage in the background, this is probably the most aggressive we've been. Notice, our team is pushing in, and we're being aggro at the same time, and we wind up being successful. Now, it's, I'm not going to say this is the most brilliant play of all time, but it just kind of fits the bill, right? Our team's going in, our team's being aggressive, we're being aggressive with them. Cool. Perfect. We also had a shield generator at that time, which probably helped a little bit. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Like I said... Still getting back warmed up into it. I know it's been a it's been a rough week. I think we've only had two videos this week, two or three videos. But I will be back to normal streaming schedule. Well, video schedule, also streaming schedule as well. Uh, and check out my second channel. I'll be doing the dailies also there. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day. See you soon.